In September 2025, an agreement was signed in Russia between the Solikamsk Magnesium Plant and the Ulan Ude Instrument Building Production Association, which is a subsidiary of the Kret concern under Rostec. Vladimir Verkovtsev, Director General of Rosatom Nedra, the managing company for Rosatom's mining division, and Vladimir Lushnikov, Director General of the Ulan Ude Association, both endorsed the official document of strategic partnership. The collaboration is focused on the advancement of domestic production of rare earth metals of the magnetic group, with a particular emphasis on neodymium and praseodymium, which are essential components of modern permanent magnets. This initiative is not merely a commercial contract. It is an important step in Russia's effort to establish a technologically advanced and self-sufficient supply chain in rare earths, thereby overcoming dependence on international markets dominated by China. Let us first evaluate the Russian context for rare earth metals and their strategic importance. Despite their name, rare earth metals are actually quite common. However, their extraction is technologically complex and their refining requires sophisticated chemical engineering. The magnetic group, which is mainly composed of neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium, and terbium, is of major importance for modern high-tech industries. Neodymium iron boron magnets, which are permanent magnets made from neodymium iron and boron alloys, are widely used in electric motors for electric vehicles, renewable energy systems like wind turbines, precision electronics, aviation, defense avionics, and guidance systems. China controls more than 80% of the global market for rare earth extraction, refining, and magnet production. This dominance is a significant vulnerability for global supply chains and exposes other countries to geopolitical risks. The United States, Japan, and the European Union have attempted to diversify their sources in recent years. However, the complexity of managing environmental costs and scaling up production continues to present obstacles. The challenge for Russia, which has large reserves of rare earth minerals in Siberia, the Urals, and the Far East, has been more about industrial organization than resource availability. To date, Russia has depended on imports, including from China, to supply its high-tech industries with neodymium and praseodymium. The Solikamsk Magnesium Plant and Ulan Ude Agreement is designed to close this gap by establishing a domestic supply chain covering mining, processing, and supplying rare earths for advanced military and civilian technologies. The Solikamsk Magnesium Plant, located in Perm Krai, has historically been one of Russia's most significant chemical metallurgy manufacturers. For more than 60 years, it has specialized in magnesium, rare earth compounds, and associated chemical products. The plant has recently been integrated into Rosatom's Mineral Resources Division. This reflects the state corporation's intention to consolidate rare earth metals within its industrial ecosystem, which is built around nuclear technology. The strategy is logical, as nuclear energy and defense require strategic and consistent access to advanced materials, such as high-purity metals for magnets, catalysts, and alloys. According to Russian press reports, the new Solikamsk magnesium plant facility will be capable of producing about 2,500 tons of rare earth materials each year, once operational. This is enough to meet most of the domestic demand for permanent magnets and petrochemical catalysts in Russia. The output secures independence from imports and positions Russia for exports to favorable markets, particularly in the Eurasian Economic Union and BRICS Plus frameworks. One of the largest producers of avionics, radar equipment, guidance systems, and electrical instrumentation for both civilian and defense aviation in Russia is the Ulan Ud Instrument Building Production Association, also known as CRET, which is part of the Radio Electronic Technologies Company within the Rostec State Corporation. CRET is vital to Russia's military industrial complex as it supplies avionics for aircraft such as the Su-57 fifth-generation fighter, the modernized Su-35, the MiG-35, and advanced helicopters like the Mi-28NM and K-52M. In addition to radar and communication devices, 
Magnet-based components are used in actuators, gyroscopes, and electric drive systems. Furthermore, the production of industrial electronics by Ulan Ude requires rare earth permanent magnets with guaranteed access. Through direct supply agreements with Solokamsk Magnesium Plant, Ulan Ude guarantees a consistent supply of essential input materials from within Russia. The agreement also covers the joint development of new high tech products based on these rare earths, not just raw material supply. For instance, magnetosensitive sensors, guided missile systems, drones, electric propulsion for aviation, and even civilian applications such as electric transport. Import substitution serves as the strategic foundation of this agreement. Since the escalation of Western sanctions in 2022 and earlier sanctions in 2014, Russia has faced shortages of semiconductor technologies, composite materials, and special metals that were previously purchased internationally. Magnets are no exception. Russia's high-precision industries once imported part of their neodymium and praseodymium content from Chinese refineries, either directly or indirectly. This dependence posed a serious threat to national security. During the signing ceremony, Vladimir Verkhovtsev emphasized that the agreement lays the foundation for an import-substituting chain, from rare earth metals to magnets to finalized Russian high-tech products. In other words, Russia aims to replicate the vertically integrated model that China has mastered for decades. By doing so, it creates a foundation for competitiveness in renewable energy, defense, and aviation while ensuring autonomy. Although this agreement is a significant development in Russia's pursuit of industrial autonomy, the country faces many challenges in its full implementation. The first barrier is technological. Advanced chemical separation processes, such as solvent extraction, are often used in magnet alloy production and rare earth refining. These require extraordinary precision. Despite Russia's technical expertise, it lags behind global leaders like China and Japan, who dominate large-scale production of high-performance permanent magnets. To bridge this gap, Russia must modernize facilities, establish specialized magnet plants, and invest in focused research. Environmental challenges are another issue. Rare earth ores are often found with thorium and uranium, meaning their extraction and refining can produce toxic and radioactive waste. Proper ecological controls, waste management, and safe long-term storage solutions are required. In sensitive regions like the Kola Peninsula and Yakutia, expansion may be limited if these risks are not solved. Russia must balance environmental protection with industrial expansion. Market economics also present difficulties. Despite Russia's progress toward self-sufficiency, China still influences global pricing. Chinese suppliers can lower prices to undermine competitors, creating instability. Russia may need state subsidies, guaranteed government procurement, and long-term contracts with defense and aerospace firms to stabilize demand and protect its rare earth sector from market fluctuations. Ultimately, success will depend on full industry integration. Russia must build infrastructure to turn neodymium and praseodymium concentrates into finished magnets and alloys. This requires investment in downstream plants for magnet sintering, alloy melting, and component polishing, as well as training specialists. Without such integration, raw production at Solokamsk Magnesium Plant cannot fully support the aerospace, automotive, and electronics industries. Only coordinated development across mining, metallurgy, and high-tech manufacturing can unlock the agreement's full potential. The Solokamsk Ulan Ud Alliance reflects a new trend in Russia's industrial policy, reinforcing domestic supply chains in critical sectors like energy, aviation, and microelectronics. It aligns with the government's strategy for the development of the rare earth industry until 2035, which supports exploration, refining, and production. Russia's self-sufficiency not only reduces vulnerability to sanctions, but also opens doors for geopolitical partnerships. Cooperation with India, Iran, and African states, along with BRICS initiatives, 
could create joint enterprises in mining and magnet production. China and Russia have already discussed coordinating rare earth supply strategies to allied economies, potentially countering Western attempts to reduce reliance on Chinese supply chains. In conclusion, the cooperation agreement between Ulan Udi and the Solikamsk magnesium plant is more than an industrial contract. It is a blueprint for Russia's independence in the rare earth sector and for technological sovereignty. By ensuring annual production of 2,500 tons of neodymium and praseodymium oxides, Russia secures its defense, aviation, and petrochemical sectors while creating potential for export growth. The collaboration fills a key gap in Russia's industrial system by moving from raw mineral extraction to refining and producing advanced magnet materials needed for modern technologies. Despite technological, environmental, and market challenges, Russia is determined to cultivate its own rare earth ecosystem. The partnership of Solikamsk and Ulan Ude shows this resolve. This project demonstrates how sanctions and geopolitical pressures can drive internal industrial alignment. Over time, it could strengthen Russia's domestic position and its global standing as new blocs compete for technological dominance and resources. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us